Cougar pinned down with a bicycle after it latching onto woman in attack. After a cougar latched onto her and injured the woman's face and neck, the woman's companions saved her, they used a bicycle to tie the animal down. The 60-year-old was attacked by the animal on a mountain route close to Falls City in Washington State on Saturday afternoon while she was riding with five other people. The pals were able to pin down a size lion with its claws and teeth and everything else under a mountain bike until we arrived, according to Carlo Pace, an officer with the Department of Fish and Wildlife, who also said that there was a struggle with this animal. He added, they did fight back. If it wasn't for these people the lady that was attacked would be in much worse shape. The group were riding near a creek that is a cougar's natural place to follow prey. These bicyclists happen to be in that place. Wrong place, wrong time. The cougar was shot and killed by wildlife police, but the woman has already been released from the hospital. At the time of the incident, witnesses claimed to have seen a second cougar roaming through the neighborhood. During their hunt, the officers were unable to find the animal. A 34 kilograms cougar was taken from the site by authorities, according to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and its body was taken to a nearby university lab for analysis. According to the agency, officials hope to find out the cougar's age, physical state, and whether it suffered from any illnesses. Mr. Pace said cougars typically keep away from people, adding that there have been 22 fatal cougar attacks in Washington state, including two that were fatal, in the last century. In July 2023, an eight-year-old on a camping trip in Olympic National Park in Washington sustained minor injuries in a cougar attack. U.S. frustration with Israel has grown in recent weeks, new UN resolution is sign of that displeasure. Many nations throughout the globe have urged for a stop to the violence in Gaza, and Washington's steadfast diplomatic backing for Israel at the UN has placed the US in an increasingly isolated position. Additionally, there is internal pressure on President Biden to reroute the war inside his party. The US has twice used its veto power as one of the Security Council's permanent members to oppose measures intended to end the conflict. When a proposal supported by Algeria is presented to the Security Council on Tuesday afternoon, it is anticipated to do so once more in support of a quick and durable ceasefire. The White House contends that it would make the ongoing discussions for a new hostage agreement more difficult and that a break in hostilities now, in the absence of an agreement, may lead to the hostages being held permanently. But since the number of civilian deaths in Gaza has continued to increase quickly and aid into the region has been blocked despite U.S. demands, U.S. dissatisfaction with Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu has been progressively increasing in recent weeks. Reports of a resolution developed in the U.S. are likely an indication of this disapproval and an effort to change the perception across the world that the nation is involved in the conflict. According to sources, the phrase will, as far as we can tell, only apply to, as soon as practicable, a departure from U.S. policy, and will call for a temporary truce. This allows room for interpretation over the exact date. An invasion of Rafah, in southern Gaza, would have serious implications for regional peace and security, but only under current circumstances, according to the resolution, which is essentially a criticism of Israel. This leaves open the possibility that Israel will provide a workable plan for the 1.2 million civilians who are seeking refuge there. The U.S. resolution would also be contingent on the release of any hostages still held and the removal of all obstacles to allow for the increased flow of humanitarian supplies. The date of the vote is unknown, U.S. ambassadors to the U.N. have advised against holding it today and stated that they are not in a haste to move it along. First, there will be private talks as the U.S. needs to garner backing and maybe change the language to make it passable. The majority of members of the U.N. Security Council may protest the existing arrangement because they demand an early ceasefire. Donald Trump advertises $399 a pair of golden, never-surrender high-top e-sneakers. At $399 a pair, Donald Trump is marketing a line of footwear bearing his name. The presidential candidate made an appearance at Sneaker Con, a shoe festival in Philadelphia that bills itself as the greatest sneaker show on earth. At the Philadelphia Convention Center, Trump debuted what he dubbed the first official Trump footwear to booze and applause. The trainers are red and white high tops with a brilliant gold tee, embossed on the back, along with American flag trimming. 
The shoes, aftershave, and perfume are being sold on a new website under the Never Surrender High Tops brand, along with other Trump-branded merchandise. Although the website claims to be unrelated to the Trump campaign, internet posts by campaign officials for Trump have highlighted the website. Speaking at the event, the former president said, there's a lot of emotion in this room. This is something that I've been talking about for 12 years, 13 years. And I think it's going to be a big success. According to the updated website, CIC Ventures LLC, a business that Mr. Trump disclosed ownership of in his 2023 financial declaration, is in charge of it. The new project is not political and has nothing to do with any political campaign, according to the website. The sneakers, on the other hand, are billed as a numbered, limited edition, a true collector's item that is bold, gold, and tough, just like President Trump. The Never Surrender sneakers are your rally cry in shoe form, the description says. Put on your shoes and go forth prepared to conquer. After a civil fraud trial in New York earlier this week, Mr. Trump was fined $354.9 million. He will be required to give over at least $453.5 million, interest included. In addition, the judge granted Trump a three-year ban on operating companies in New York. Eric and Donald Jr., his sons, were also banned for two years. U.S. man admits rape and murder after women pushed down to death near German landmark. A U.S. man has confessed to the rape and killing of a lady who was shoved down a ravine close to a well-known German monument that served as the model for the renowned Disney Castle. It is believed that the Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland, California, and the Cinderella Castle in Disney World, Florida, drew influence from Neuschwanstein in Bavaria, southern Germany. The confession was given by the 31-year-old at the beginning of his trial in Kempton, southern Germany. In June of last year, he supposedly met two American ladies, ages 21 and 22, close to Germany's most famous landmark, Neuschwanstein Castle. The trio, according to the prosecution, was near the Marienbrook, a bridge that spans a canyon and provides views of the castle. He is reported to have forced the younger woman to the ground and attempted to strip her after drawing them away from the route. The second lady said that the suspect shoved her down a steep hill when she attempted to intervene. She survived a fall of around 165 feet 50 meters. The younger lady was allegedly raped by the man after he choked her till she blacked out. She was slain, according to the prosecution, when she was shoved down the slope. In addition, the defendant, whose identity is protected by German law, is accused of attempting murder and having child pornography. He reportedly had data about child sexual assault on his laptop and phone. Philip Mueller, the defense attorney, said that his client had committed an unfathomable crime when he entered the courtroom with his face concealed. Defendants in Germany do not formally enter pleas to charges, nonetheless, the guy just reiterated his attorney's statements and remained silent. At the latest, a verdict is anticipated in mid-March, and the individual may be sentenced to life in jail. As zoo visitors were warned, 70 coins removed from rare alligator's stomach. A U.S. zoo has recovered 70 coins from the stomach of an alligator. Thibodeau, a 36-year-old uncommon leucistic American alligator with blue eyes and white skin, was the subject of the discovery. The finding was revealed by staff members at Omaha, Nebraska's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium while doing routine health examinations on their 10 American alligators. A warning has now been issued to visitors not to throw coins into any bodies of water at the zoo. Any loose change can instead be turned in for a souvenir coin in one of the several machines around the zoo or in our coin wishing well located in the atrium of the Desert Dome, the zoo wrote on Facebook. In response to remarks on the post, it was said that the creature consumed the money, in between cleanings, of its living space. It stated that the necessity for the same surgery to be performed on other alligators in its care was likely. All the coins were successfully removed from Thibodeau and he is back in his habitat. With the help of his training, Thibodeau was anesthetized and intubated to allow us to safely manage him during the procedure. A plastic pipe was placed to protect his mouth and safely pass the tools used to access the coins, such as a camera that helped us guide the retrieval of these objects, Christina Plug, the vet who led the procedure, said. 
Unlike albino alligators, which have pink eyes and total pigment loss, leucistic alligators are reptiles with the rarest genetic variety of the American alligator. A leucistic alligator was born at the end of the previous year in a Florida reptile park. The infant was derived from a nest of original leucistic alligators discovered in the marshes of Louisiana in 1987, making it the first solid white alligator in history. With Joaquin Phoenix, Rooney Mara is expecting her second child. Joaquin Phoenix and Rooney Mara are expecting their second child together. At the Berlin Ale International Film Festival, the actress from Social Network was spotted at the premiere of her most recent movie, La Cocina. Along with the rest of the group, she posed for pictures on the red carpet wearing a voluminous black empire line gown. The 48-year-old Phoenix and the 38-year-old Mara announced their engagement in 2019, and their kid was born in 2020. He was given the name River in honor of Phoenix's older brother, who passed away in 1993 at the age of 23 from a heroin overdose. The news has not been formally verified by the couple. The Hollywood stars first met on the set of her in 2013 and have since starred in several films together, including 2018's Mary Magdalene. La Cocina, her ongoing project, is a black-and-white film that takes place in a bustling restaurant in New York. The action takes place in a bustling New York Grill restaurant, following a current trend of high-stress kitchen dramas, with a focus on the problems of some of its underpaid immigrant crew. Alonso Ruiz Palacios, a Mexican director, is in charge of it, 